Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawa Yahweh, called to be a minister of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, by the will of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Peace, mercy, and blessings be abound unto you uh, that are waiting on our deliverance. Wanted to kind of go into a lesson just concerning, you know, um, basically, you know, these uh, doctrines um, that are, you know, running rampant and spreading concerning, you know, not eating um, any meat. And uh, what this lesson really is about is just ensuring that, you know, brothers and sisters understand uh, the difference between liberty and believing and teaching a false doctrine as in regards to diet. OK, especially when it regards to, you know, whether or not to eat meat. OK, now um, I'm doing this lesson because I've seen this guy. Um, he's actually um, an Old Testament only Israelite, meaning that he does not believe in uh, the coming New Testament as far as believing in a um, Messiah. Um, he does not believe in Yahweh Shai. He just believes that um, we are only to basically keep the Torah um, and basically, you know, um, I don't think he even talks too much about prophecies um, as far as the end time um, because a lot of times people that are Old Testament only um, and don't believe in the Messiah, don't believe um, that in a new covenant, um, they basically usually eliminate you know other aspects of uh, their own doctrine which includes you know whether or not to eat meat okay now uh, this guy had put this particular you know meme up on his page um, basically saying I do not eat anything that fart doo doo pee or screw uh, basically saying he does not eat any meat and this comes from a quote from uh, Dick Gregory um, and you know you also have you know um, one of the foremost as far as among our people you have Dr. Sebi uh, one of the things we want to let brothers know is that there's nothing wrong with abstaining from meats. It's just that when it becomes a doctrine and you begin to teach against different things um, in regards to that, you end up creating stumbling blocks, not only for yourself, but for others. OK, and that includes, you know, how are you going to be able to keep Passover? Um, how are you going to explain how your forefathers, you know, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob ate meat? How are you going to explain how Yahweh Shai ate meat as well? Um, these are things that you got to be very careful on. And you got to be very careful of what you're pushing and what you believe in. Okay, now um, I'm going to go ahead and go into just a few, you know, precepts. This is First Timothy chapter four and verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh especially that in the latter times. Okay, let me repeat that again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. I'm going to read that one more time. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. This is the time that we're in now. Okay, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils okay now remember when you when you examine this the re reason why they depart from the faith is because they gave heed to seducing spirits okay they gave heed to doctrines of devils okay and, and this is very important because one does not necessarily leave the faith just um out of nowhere a lot of times there is something that's going to draw them away and that will confuse their understanding and then they would depart through those those things seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry commanding men commanding to abstain from meats which god yahweh hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth okay for every creature of yahweh is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving this when you go into this, the last um, two verses from thir the third and fourth verse, you know, they pinpoint something about abstaining from meats and basically saying about how th uh, these creatures are good, especially the ones that were sanctified, the ones that were called clean by Yahweh for us to be able to consume. Now, again, this is not for necessarily telling brothers that if you are a vegan or vegetarian, that you should not, that you should start eating meat. That is your liberty to not eat. Okay? That is what you call liberty. But by saying but saying that one should or should not eat meat, okay, at all, that's where you become you fall into a different category of potentially teaching a false doctrine or being swayed by a doctrine of devils. Okay? Alright, so we need to have an understanding that there is a difference. Okay, because once you start teaching those things. And someone stumbles upon that and then it comes down to a time of the year when it comes to the Passover and they got to eat that and they've been believing in, in a particular doctrine that you've been teaching or pushing out that they should only eat um, basically vegetables only. 
now you're getting them in a position where they are they basically are transgression when it comes to keeping a particular you know law okay so you have to be very careful with that now this is uh first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8 now in first corinthians 8 it does talk about you know about meat sacrifice unto idols but these particular verses that i'm going to give um is going to pinpoint about eating and liberty okay so this is first corinthians 8 and 8 but meat commendeth us not to yahweh for neither if we eat are we the better neither if we eat not are we the worse but take heed lest by any means that this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay? Because there's liberty in Yahweh Shai. Okay? Um, you know, it's just like a brother has the right, whether or not he wants to be single, like Yahweh Shai was, like Paul was, or he has the right to also be married as well. Same thing when it comes to food. You have liberty. These these things, you have the liberty to basically be you know, one who does not um, want to eat meat, okay? And you have the liberty to eat meat, okay? So it's there's nothing wrong within the law. Our forefathers did it. Sometimes people decided not to, okay, at times. For case in point, Daniel. Daniel was at a feast, and he, he uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar had served different meats, and he decided to abstain from eating that meat and stick with uh, you know fruits and vegetables what they call post okay now that now I now knowing that Daniel was a prophet he also would have kept the Passover and that would mean that he would have eaten lamb we have to remember that okay so what we're trying to make sure is that brothers don't go out of their way to push these things and you got to be careful of what you're posting or what you what you believe in uh, whether it's you know this guy put up something from um, Dick Gregory, so someone else might put some stuff from Dr. Sebi, and that's okay to learn about different things, but be careful before it becomes a doctrine, because remember, this is a latter times prophecy that this would occur, that people would be rise up teaching these things, such as abstaining from eating meats. And one, also, we have to remember that brothers and sisters are coming from various doctrines and backgrounds. For example, in Hinduism, in Hinduism, you're not allowed to eat meat. Okay, so when if someone comes out from that and then they're taught that it's okay according to the scriptures, they might decide that because of how they grew up that they might consider they might continue on just being uh, not eating meat, uh, but also at the same time somebody else could come in from the same background and decide that they want to start eating meat, and then if someone comes through and tries to sway them away back into where they were before. That is bringing them into bondage and not bringing them in liberty to do as they please. That uh, which, as they please, what they try to decide to do is not against the scriptures. Because we got to remember, with what this is with liberty. Liberty is a freedom of choice within the guidelines of the gospel, right, and of the law. When someone constrains you to do something that is against your liberty. You are now have put yourself back under the yoke of bondage. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and get this. This is uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Just read this uh, on its own. Stead, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Yahweh Shai Mashiach hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay? So the, there's a difference. The liberty is within Yahweh Shai is what makes you free, but when you remove your liberty and you basically put yourself on the yoke of bondage you are now have been made a slave unto a particular doctrine and a set in a way of thinking which could include you know a doctrines of devils of not of basically telling someone to abstain from eating meats that yahweh has called clean and that should be received with thanksgiving for those that have faith and believe in the truth Okay, so we have to be very careful uh, that we're not doing that. Again, it's okay within the liberty for you to be a vegetarian, a vegan, and it's also okay for you to be to eat meat as well. Just remember that whatever you believe in, be careful to push to not push those things and understand that within yourself that is your liberty. But once you make it a doctrine, 
you are putting someone under the yoke of bondage and you are basically laying a stumbling block before your brother or sister. So again, hopefully this is edifying. I want to give all praise and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Peace, mercy, and blessing be abounded unto you, brothers and sisters, throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.